A century ago, before the Second World War, travel was very different. Flying boats offered luxuries and facilities that have not been seen since, and the Boeing 314 was one of the most capable and successful of them. It had a glamorous but somewhat short life. But what was this aircraft like, and why did it fall out of favour? First of all, what exactly is a flying boat? Put simply, it's an aircraft that lands and takes off from the water on its fuselage. This is different from a modern-day seaplane which uses floats to land on water. Flying boats were developed in the early days of aviation. Airports were not common and are expensive to build, so being able to land or take off from any large body of water opened up many more possibilities. Cities with waterfronts loved the idea, with harbours now serving a dual use for flying boats and ships. Early experiments with flying boats began before the First World War, with American manufacturer Curtis leading developments with its Model H flying boat. Improvements in the hull and performance led to the Felix Stowe series of boats well used during the war. Passenger services began in the 1920s, firstly from the UK to France and the Channel Islands, and later to British overseas territories with Imperial Airways. British manufacturers Supermarine and Short Brothers launched several models through the 1920s and 1930s. Short launched the S-23 or Empire flying boat in 1936. These first served with Imperial Airways, but soon went on to serve with joint venture Qantas Empire Airways on the Sydney to Southampton route. This was a nine-day route that highlighted this age of pioneering long-haul travel. Over in the US, Pan American World Airways, or Pan Am, also developed its early international flights around flying boats. Its first plane came from manufacturers Consolidated Aircraft, the Martin Company, and Sikorsky. These headed first to the Caribbean and South America, and then across the Atlantic to the UK from 1937. But Pan Am's president, Juan Tripp, wanted to take things further, approaching Boeing to discuss developing a larger flying boat with improved range for transatlantic crossings. Boeing had already seen success with its all-metal monomail for airmail services and the passenger 247 that followed it. It moved away from these designs to work with Pan Am on flying boats. The result was the Boeing 314. A key feature from Boeing was the use of the wing design for its XB-15 bomber project. This led to a larger flying boat with a passenger capacity of around 70, double Pan Am's previous models. It also had the range for transatlantic or transpacific crossings. The Boeing 314 first flew in June 1938, entering service with Pan Am in 1939. Boeing went on to build 12 aircraft. Pan Am purchased nine, while BOAC took three. These were originally ordered by Pan Am and transferred before completion. Pan Am carried on its tradition of naming the aircraft quote-unquote clippers after the 19th century merchant sailing ships. The first six clippers were named Honolulu, California, Yankee, Atlantic, Dixie and American and were all delivered between January and June of 1939. The next planes named Pacific, Anzac and Cape Town were designated as 314As and had larger fuel tanks and upgraded engines. These quickly went on with Pan Am to offer global service from the US. BOAC's three aircraft, all 314A models, were delivered beginning in 1941. As such, they saw mostly military service and were given the names Berwick, Bristol and Bangor. Pan Am's clippers were noteworthy not just for their size and range, but also for their onboard comforts. Flying boats are developed into luxurious forms of travelling. Evolving from the upper end of ocean liner transport, passengers were treated well, with a range of facilities and excellent service. These intrepid travellers were accommodated in armchair-style seating with tables distributed across a series of separate compartments, six standard compartments and one deluxe. Nighttime use was limited to 40 passengers instead of 70. This saw the compartments converted to provide full-length sleeping berths. 
lavatories were full size, offering plenty of space and seating. There was even a separate urinal for the gentlemen. There was a separate dining room with fixed tables and seating. Food is described as being from four-star hotels served in style by white-coated waiters. The 314 was a success not only in passenger service but also for military use. Months after its launch, the Second World War began. With passenger travel on hold, the 314 switched to transporting military personnel and cargo. Ownership of the Clippers was transferred to the military with the aircraft repainted. However, they continued to be operated by Pan Am civilian airline crews. They served both the European and Pacific battlefronts, including transporting supplies to the Soviet Union, where its range was beneficial. Wartime service also saw one of the most famous Boeing 314 uses as the first Air Force One-style presidential transport, although it predated the use of the call sign. In 1943, Dixie Clipper took President Franklin Roosevelt to the Casablanca Conference for a strategic meeting with wartime allies. One of BOAC's aircraft, Berwick, also made history when it carried Winston Churchill back to the UK in 1942 after a US stay. Despite their romantic appeal today, the flying boats had their problems. Speed was a major limitation. They could cross oceans, but only at around 155 miles per hour, about 25% the speed of the Boeing 777. And long journeys also required multiple stops. The Second World War spurred airport construction around the world, making longer routes possible without a water landing. Land-based aircraft dominated the skies during the war, with popular aircraft like the DC-3 leading the move to new modes of operation. Without having to accommodate water landing, aircraft could focus more on aerodynamics and speed. Jet aircraft would soon take this further and leave the flying boats far behind. While some of the aircraft found a post-war life, none ultimately survived long. Pan Am and Boac retired their 314s and moved on to other aircraft. The planes that had survived the war went on to other airlines but saw minimal service. Honolulu, Yankee and Atlantic Clippers never made it back into service. Pacific Clipper was sold to Universal Airlines and used for parts. Cape Town Clipper was sold to American International Airways in 1947. It was recommissioned as Bermuda Sky Queen but sank the same year after ditching on a flight from the UK to the US. Startup airline World Airways bought four Pan Am Clippers and the three Boac Clippers. They saw use for cargo around the Americas but were all scrapped by 1952. World Airways retired them all in 1951 with just Bristol sold on, but it sank moored in Baltimore before it re-entered service. By 1952, they'd all been scrapped. In recent years, there have been plans to recover the remains of two sunken 314s, Honolulu and Cape Town Clipper. US-based Underwater Admiralty Sciences has been trying to secure funding since 2011, but this is yet to happen. For now, the best chance to see a Boeing 314 is with a reconstruction of Yankee Clipper at the Foynes Flying Boat Museum in Ireland. The decline of the 314 marked the end of the flying boat as the dominant long-haul option, but it was not the end of them completely. Smaller flying boats were still useful for remote locations or island access. These days, seaplanes take on the same role. Aquila Airways continued to operate short flying boats from the UK until the late 1950s. Anset Australia continued service longer, as did some operators in the Americas. The Boeing 314 was a stylish aircraft that defined the early adventurous days of aviation, as well as important technical achievements by Boeing. What do you think was the 314's greatest contribution to aviation? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.